Suns and Nuggets. Suns beat the Nuggets 129 to 124. I want to talk about Nikola Jokic for a minute because I bet his points plus uh, rebounds total. I, my thought process was he had 17 assists in game one. He had uh, 17, 16 assists in game one, 17 in game two or something. He had crazy assist numbers early on. But that last game, he passed up a lot of shooting opportunities and he started to pass the ball a little more. So my thought process was he's going to be good under the hoop. He's going to be grabbing rebounds the entire night because that's just what he does. Assists are going to go down. Obviously, the assists came down a little bit. He still had 11 and 53 points. So my theory was right. But I bet his rebounds plus point total, which was 42 and a half, and he hit it with just the point. So a huge night for him. 53 points. I felt the Nuggets gave this game away a little bit. Um, I think the Suns, obviously, they earned it. It took a great night from Devin Booker and Kevin Durant again. That's what it's going to take because they just don't have a lot of bench strength right now. Uh, but I still believe the Nuggets will win this game just because win the series because they have home court. What do you think? Well, what I think is I think you're shortchanging the Suns bench because I have been their biggest critic of all. I mean, do you remember when the Durant trade happened? I came on this show and I said, I still don't think the Suns are favorites in the Western Conference. They're probably my second or third best team right now. And I think I've been proven right. I said the Lakers were better than them and I was laughed at. But look, the Suns, their bench has been terrible throughout the playoffs until the last game. They won the bench battle 40 to 11. Every time the Nuggets wanted to come back and they were they were keeping the pressure down. They were they were standing right on top of the cell or on top of the Suns, like saying, if you mess up, we are here to capitalize. And it was Landry Shamit who makes four threes in the fourth quarter. So he was huge, he was huge for them. TJ Warren makes a big shot in the fourth. And Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, they both go for 36. Durant is amazing, but I honestly don't even care. We have to talk about what Devin Booker is doing. He's averaging 37 points per game in the playoffs, shooting 60% from the field, a six foot five guard shooting 60% on high volume, high, high volume is unreal. And he's shooting 52% from three and 87% at the free throw line. I'm not joking, Tanner. I said this on my personal show. I'm not joking. If he makes it to the NBA Finals, I don't think he has to win. If he makes it to the NBA Finals doing what he is doing, it's the greatest playoff performance that we have ever seen. I mean, nobody through nine games has averaged this many points on these shooting splits. So you can say he's already off to the best offensive start ever. But if he just makes it to that championship game, we can look back and say, wow, this is the best that any player has ever done in the playoffs. And we've also really got to reevaluate where do we have Devin Booker in the NBA right now? Because Devin Booker looks miles better than Kevin Durant right now. And I'm not even saying Kevin Durant just looks bad, but Devin Booker is that entire team. I mean, he's shooting 79% on and averaging 41 points across the last two games, the games the Suns won. Like, yeah. he, he, go ahead, go ahead. He's just been off the charts. So he's gone over two and a half threes, I believe, in eight of nine games in the playoffs right now. Like he's been sensational from three point lines, just high bulk, high volume. Like you said, he's making everything. I think the thing with KD is like not playing a good chunk of the season has shown uh, down the stretch when he's got to Phoenix. And we talk about the bench though. Like even though Devin Booker has been sensational and won games, like they're still going to need the bench to win the finals. I'm not going to say Devin Booker is going to do it all along with KD because they obviously won this game because of their bench. But I don't look at these like outlier performances. I look at consistency. You know Devin Booker is going to show up every night. You know KD is going to show up most of the time. But the bench is not going to show up. And I just, even though Booker is putting together one of the best playoff performances of all time, I just don't know if I can count on the Suns team if they get to the next round, if they get to the NBA Finals, because the bench has not been consistent. No, I'm 100% there with you. And this is very strange to say because you want to say that it's impossible for Devin Booker to keep this up when he has quite literally kept it up in every game. He has been phenomenal in every game of the playoffs. But you still, it's, look, the simple fact is you can't bake on, you know, I ran track and field, right? If you go into the Olympics, you can't bank on somebody setting a world record. If you're going into the Super Bowl and, you know, let's just say, uh, who knows? Let, let's just, let's say that, let's say everybody on the Kansas City Chiefs is injured and it's literally just Patrick Mahomes. You can't bank on him throwing for 700 yards. You can't bank on these phenomenal achievements, these never before seen feats to happen. And that's what Devin Booker is doing. So as incredible as he has been, nothing but respect. I just, it's not logical for me to expect him to give me 37 tonight on 60% from the field. And if he doesn't, this series would be over. The Nuggets, I mean, they only lost by five points. 
And I know Jokic had 53. Murray had 28, but nobody else had more than 11. Their bench was minus 11, minus 11, minus 17. So you can say there were flaws in that Nuggets performance. And look, they're going back to their home arena. They had the best home record in the NBA this season. They were 35-6. and six. They won both of the first two games in the series at home pretty convincingly. I know this podcast comes out the day after the game, so we're going to be able to see what happened. But I'm betting the Nuggets minus 5.5 tonight, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends in 6. If it has to go 7, so be it. But the Nuggets are getting this done. I, I just don't have Phoenix in fi- I don't have faith in Phoenix finding their bench for multiple games. Well, it's kind of like the Celtics series, too. Like, when you look at the Sixers, are they going to be able to have James Harden step up and score 40 plus and then have a great night from Joel Embiid and then get performances out of their bench players? Like, you just don't know if that's going to happen. Like, I have more faith in the Celtics being consistent than the Sixers, especially with two more games at home. Same thing with this series. The Nuggets have two more games at home if this series does go seven. I believe Jokic is going to be just fine. He's going to be able to make shots from down low. I think their team overall is better, and I don't have any faith in the Suns bench consistently over the rest of the series. And Devin Booker, he's got to come back to the mean eventually he's not going to make 40 he's gonna have, not gonna have 40 points a night it's just not going to happen throughout the rest of the playoffs like he's got to come back to the mean at some point and can he do it for the next three games we'll see um but i'm going to be on the nuggets minus five here and still taking the nuggets win the series with these yep 100 percent tanner